Okay, so we're picking up where we left off here the last time around. Um, I'm on the ground floor plan, so I'll just only see those ground floor dimensions, um, 68 meter squared odd, um, the internal walls on the ground floor, and um, well, that's the only two dimensions I have on my ground floor. If I selected my first floor, I'd see the first floor dimensions. If I wanted to turn off, um, or not turn off, I suppose, hide dimensions itself, little eye here for the ground floor, and then I wouldn't see either one of those two dimensions. What I'm gonna measure now is my foundations. Um, so let's just click on sheets of models again. Um, let's have a look at um, our foundation drawings. Okay, if we've got a foundation drawing down here, and we do. Now the issue with this foundation drawing, just to give you a heads up, it's not to scale, I haven't scaled it yet. Um, I do have a foundation outer line, but I don't see a foundation inner line. Now if I had, it would make it a lot easier for me to measure foundations here because I would measure the area of the foundations, obviously having that internal line. The reason I don't have it is because the ground floor itself and this kind of hatched, uh, triangular hatched kind of symbol is hiding that inside line without the foundation. So a fairly straight forward way of measuring the foundation. In that case, if I had that hidden, and I should have probably hit it before I exported it out of Revit, is measure the area of the foundation and assign the default height of the foundation, which would be about 300 millimeters. So if I measure the area of the foundation, multiply its height, I get my volume of foundation. So um, I can't really do that with this um, unless that was hidden and it's not. So I'm gonna measure it uh, a little bit of a different way. I'm gonna measure it per a center line. Um, now I can measure it off this drawing a center line times width times height would give me also give me a volume uh, or the volume of concrete um, of that foundation but in this case um, I don't have any dimensions here to scale this um, I could probably uh, get a dimension off the ground floor plan um, or get a known dimension from that point to that point and scale it in that way probably make it a little bit easier um, and uh, do it that way but I can measure it also off the ground floor plan which is probably what I'll do um, Scroll, scroll down to the very end, you should have a section called rising wall, foundation section. If you click that, there's your section um, through your foundation. Um, you've got a 900 by 300, fairly standard strip foundation. You've got uh, a full, full, I suppose, block rising wall, block on flat, block on edge. Sometimes it'll be, um, I suppose, two blocks on edge and it'll be filled with concrete, as in the in-between. Um, I suppose in between the two leaves be filled with concrete below ground floor but here it's slightly different where we've got a kind of a solid block wall and um, above that then we've got um, up to ground floor we've got this kind of area here and um, whereby it's a block full fill insulation and a thermal block we'll get to that in a second um, what I need to do first is um, I need to measure um, or scale this drawing. Now I have it scaled, but don't worry about that. Yours will probably say not to scale up here. Um, to scale it, just click calibrate down here. Select two known points. Well, there's a few dimensions in this drawing. Um, I could take maybe the 150. In fact, in this case, what I might do is take the combination of 150, 150 and 75. So what's that, 375. So first point, um, zoom in a good bit so I get it bang on. Um, zoom out and then zoom in up here on the second point zoom in to what I think would be there thereabouts click uh, 375 type it in 375 and calibrate okay so it's come out at 114 again which is originally what I had it um, and I'm happy enough with that scale if I wanted to maybe uh, do a quick measure you should be kind of getting used to this by now click on one point on one side and then hover over uh, it's there thereabouts 900 so click escape and that kind of goes away um, so let's go ahead and do that measurement i want to get the center line i suppose of this um rising wall so it would be the center line um, of the foundation as well of course so what would be the center line of the foundation it would essentially be the center line of what this is uh, showing here in terms of the cavity wall so maybe go back to my um ground floor what I might do is I might actually click the little bookmark here for this rising wall because it'll be referring back to it. So click that um, and that's gone now up, um, well up near the top, rising foundation scheme or section. Click ground floor plan to go back to my ground floor. So all I've really done um, with that spiel is essentially uh, put a scale on that rising wall, that rising wall section. 
I'm going to click back to my takeoff types, which is this on the left hand side. And I'm going to add um, a takeoff type here. I've got them hidden, um, or at least what's shown here hidden. If you haven't done that, click the little eye. Um, it just ma makes it a lot easier when you're measuring um, off, uh, off the plans that the other takeoffs are not shown. I'm going to click plus and add my foundation. Maybe foundation dash concrete or whatever way what whatever you want to call it, it could be concrete foundation. Um, I'm going to measure it as a length, linear length. Um, color, maybe give it a strong color, red color. Come down here and classification, substructure, because it's underneath the floor level. And then, yeah, 1.9. So substructure 1.9. Now, what, what's my output? Well, I'm looking for a volume of concrete, haven't I? So I'm going to click drop down and click cubic meters. So even though I'm measuring it as a length, I'm looking for it as a volume. Kind of sounds a bit odd, sounds a bit confusing, but you'll notice when I pull down this here, I get a default width and a default height. So this is what gives me the volume. So the default width, what did I say, was 0.9 of a meter, or 900 millimeters, and 0.3 is the height. So once I do that, um, now if, again, going back to what I said previously about measuring the foundation, I could measure it as an area, and then in, in that case, um, if I measure it as an area by selecting that there, all I have is a default height there because my area, which is what I measure, it has times the default height to give me my volume. But because I don't have that second, let's say, that inside edge of my foundation, I can't do that. So I'm going to start my takeoff, and once I do, I get this little crosshair. I'm zooming in, zooming out, and I can move it around. So click starting on uh, one of the corners. So in between what I think is the, would be the center line. So we could start maybe right there. And then I've got this big thick line. It should be a little bit narrower, but that's just the way it is right now. Um, and I'm gonna work my way around the drawing. So my first left click, um, go into the center, what I think is the next kind of corner between these two points here. So maybe there, um, zoom out. Now I'm not going to hit enter um, until I work my way around the drawing um, because I'm looking for a continuous line rather than a bunch of single lines. So maybe click and um, work my way around um, what I think is the next kind of in between those two points. So maybe like there. It doesn't have to be incredibly exact. It'll be there, thereabouts. Um, and you should be kind of getting used to navigating this drawing. Um, it takes a little bit of getting used to. You might have to start. Now you can go back a little bit, a few steps. I don't know if I showed you this before, but if I've kind of worked my way as far as here and I've made a mistake, if I go backspace on my keyboard, see the way it kind of goes back a bit? And I'm back to that point. Or Control Z will even do it. Um, but the backspace is quite handy because that will kind of go back a few steps. Now, if I made a mistake or I clicked on the wrong point or I did something, now I won't do it if you've completed a measurement. If you've completed a measurement and you want to undo it, I suppose in its its entirety as such, press Control, uh, hold Control down, and then press Z. So I'm going to come back on what I think is the first point, um, and then click, boom, done. So there I've got my continuous line. So what have I got? 9.65 uh, meters squared, and that of course is the length of this measurement um, times. Um, times its height, times its uh, times its uh, width, height by width, by depth, by length. If I wanted to see exactly what that is in terms of a detailed dimension, I can click the little three points, detail takeoff, and there I have one linear line. In fact, if I right click it, um, is this how I might do this? No, oh, hover over it. There you can see if I hover over it, I've got quantity, I've got a distance 35.74 meters, I've got a width times height, and those kind of lines as such um, multiply by each other give me the quantity of 9.65 meters cubed. So that's my linear takeoff as such, um, times the height, times the width, it gives me my volume. Now to go back, again, I click the little plus or arrows at the top and I get back to my dimension. So that little three dots, Detail takeoff just gives me a little bit more detail in the accumulated takeoff. Now, in this case, it's only one line, but I could have five or six different items there that make up that overall dimension. 
Okay, so by clicking that drop down, I'll see all my individual dimensions, but in this case, I only have one. So to get back to, I suppose, my overall takeoff, I click the little arrow, top left hand corner. Now, I didn't show you that before, but just a heads up on uh, a little bit more detail there in that regard. So there you go, that's my foundation concrete, 9.65 meters cubed, even though it was measured at the center line. Okay, we're gonna move on. Um, let's add another dimension. Let's maybe take off, if we go back to our sheets and models, click our rising wall. Um, let's take off this wall thickness here. So what is it in terms of, of a quick measurement? This rising wall. Um, now, straight off the bat, I know it can be the width um, of a block um, on flat plus the edge of a block or width of a block on edge. So in total, it should be 315 or sorry 215 plus the 10 mortar plus another 100 so it'll be 325 so let's scroll that across and there it is 325 or so so click escape that little <coughs> arrow is gone 325 times the height of now i don't have a dimension that measures it from the top of foundation up to what would be here because then it changes to something different above but let's do a little uh, measurement quick measure starting at the top foundation and then once I hover over where I want it to go, it's about 450. So 325 thick, 450 high. Again, I'm gonna look, look for the center line of that. Now there should be a way, I'm gonna go back to my um, my uh, different sheets. Ooh, click top left in the corner, go back to my ground floor. Now, <clears throat> in other software, what I could do is, I could actually copy or duplicate that dimension um, and then just change, I suppose, the height or width according to what the new height or width is. The reason being is because I'm, I'm still looking for the center line um, of what's shown there, um, of what I've already measured. I'm just changing, I suppose, the height and width to get the rising wall instead of the concrete volume. Um, so I'm still looking for the center line, but I'm applying it to a height rather than a height and width. Um, but in this case, with this software for the moment, and I think it's going to change, is when I do duplicate it, it deletes the measurement. So I can duplicate, I suppose, the information in there, but I'm kind of deleting the measurement as such um, that's associated with this. So we've kind of to start from scratch, but that's okay. I'm going to click the plus, create takeoff type. And let's call it uh, rising wall. Now there's a few bits that make up the rising wall. In this case, it's rising wall three two five millimeter and i might call it solid block so that's the block on flat block on edge i'm going to measure it as a linear length that's fine too keep it as that blue that's okay what comes up there as a default and um, it's still in drop down substructure and this time i'm looking for not a cubic meters because i'm not looking for a volume i'm actually looking for the area of the wall I'm measuring it as the length, but I'm going to sign, if I scroll down here, I'm going to sign a height of, um, three, it was 3 to 5 thick, it was 450 or 0.45 in this case, because I'm looking for a meter um, in terms of height. So I think I'm ready to start the takeoff in that case. So start takeoff, um, and it's essentially the exact same thing again. Um, I might need to turn off that little eye there. Make sure I'm on the right wall and click again. There we go. Get my little crosshair. Okay, so I've turned off my, I suppose, my uh, takeoffs there because if I have them all on, I won't be able to see exactly. And I have to do the exact same thing again because it really is the center line. Um, click. That's no harm. Bit of practice. I'll do this a little bit quicker here. Click. See the way I'm zooming out and zoom in. If I make a mistake, I can backspace. If I've actually completed a measurement and it's totally incorrect, and you just start again, uh, click Control Z on your keyboard and it'll delete that measurement. If you want to delete a few things, Control Z, Control Z will delete a few stages. So I'm kind of just I did do that as accurate as I probably could. Uh, and I'm going to come back to my very first line. It's a continuous line. And click. So that's my continuous line. Um, so I'm still in my kind of takeoff mode. If I select this uh, selection here, you'll see that when I do that, um, I get these points. So if I made a mistake, 
um, and I want to adjust a point in or out, I can click the little selection and kind of hover over the point and kind of pull it out and pull it in. So ultimately there I've got an area of, you can see, whoops, I just clicked uh, the wrong thing there. Anyway, as I was saying, um, rising walls, 325 solid block, uh, 1608. Um, and that essentially is uh, my center line times my height. So let's go back and look at um, the sheets and models again, um, because I had bookmarked this rising wall. Um, you can see it there. Um, so I've measured the concrete foundation. I've measured this 325 thick rising wall. Um, now this is not quite a, a solid block that is 325 thick. It's actually a, a solid block laid and flat, a block laid and edged, and kind of one over the other as such to form what is a 325 thick rising wall. So um, just to make a note that you don't get um, a block that is 325 wide. Um, it's made up of a kind of a single block on flat, single block on that edge up to a height of 450. So above that then, which is still in the substructure below the ground floor level, which is right here, is um, what's well, slightly different here in relation to a rising wall, what's below and what's above. This particular line here, we've got an outer block edge uh, laid on flat, or sorry, laid on edge. Um, so that would be, I can measure it here if need be, but off the top of my head, it would be 215. Ooh, click, um, so down 215. Well, it's shot 219 there, but it's 215. Um, in the middle then is full fill cavity. And then on the outer edge, or in the inner edge, inner leaf is a thermal block. You'll make it, see a note of it there. Slightly different makeup in terms of, it's more of an insulated block. It's probably mixed with some sort of insulation properties as well as the actual concrete itself. Um, now this is also a thermal block here, but we'll measure that as an extra over, um, over and above what we measured there as the solid block when it comes to the bill of quantities. But in this case, we can measure them separately. We've got the outer leaf, we've got the uh, internal cavity, which is full fill insulation, and we've got then the thermal block. So each one of those, um, I suppose, would have different center lines. So we're gonna measure them as three individual items because they actually are three individual items in a bill of quantities whereas this is uh, below it is uh, an individual item in terms of uh, a 325 thick solid block wall so a bit of coffee there uh, so i'm going to go back to my uh, sheets um, well actually i'm on my sheets i'm going to click ground floor plan i'm going to click my takeoff and i am going to hide the rising walls i don't need to see them so now I don't see any of my substructure takeoff or any takeoff of my floor. I'm gonna click plus. I'm gonna, well, keep it rising walls. So keep it kind of same category as such, dash. Now, starting with the outer relief, which is my 100 millimeter uh, block. So 100 meter block is fine. I'm gonna measure it as a linear block, a linear length. Um, we've done this before. Substructure should be kind of getting used to it by now. Um, again, it's still substructure because it's still below ground floor level, which is the actual finished floor itself. Um, this case, it's a square meterage. So again, my linear length times a height. What did I say my height was? If I scroll down, I said it was 0.215. So it's the height of a block as such. Well, it depends on if the block is laid on edge or flat. But in this case, if the block is on edge, it's 215 high. So two and five by a hundred by uh, four one five is essentially your 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 size of your block, isn't it? Um, so two and five, and then I'm going to start my takeoff. So click start takeoff, and I'm going to my crosshair. Um, and in this case, um, it's my outer leaf. So I'm going to click what I think is the center. You're kind of getting used to this now. Zoom out and um, zoom in. I'll do it quick. Uh, it might be exact. Um, We've got a brick facade to the front there, but in terms of what's in the rising wall below ground floor, it's still a block. So we'll get to the brick work when we measure the external walls, um, probably in the next tutorial or the tutorial after. So I'm working my way around like I've done before. This time it's the center line of my um, center line of my outer leaf, which will be slightly more than what I measured as the center line of my solid block wall. Ooh. And I come back right onto my it's green there as I hover over it, click. Okay, so there we have measured um, 787. If I wanted to see the actual length of that particular item, three dots. 
uh, detail takeoff hover over the item I can see I got 36.58 as a distance now um, if you can remember from the distance of our cavity I think when we measure the center line of the cavity for our concrete and for our, our solid block wall it was 35 or so so that would make sense that it's a bit more than what would be the cavity would be because it's outside that cavity and thus it's got a greater distance to travel so that's 787 for my 100 block outer leaf in fact i could have probably put that in there to just reiterate it i could click the little uh pencil here and 100 block and outer just change the name okay save okay now it keeps everything as is but i've just changed that to reiterate what exactly it is um so the next item i can maybe turn the uh item here off in terms of its uh, highlight so now it's nothing shown just makes it easier to measure click the plus uh, rising walls A rising wall keep it the same and um, what's the next one hundred millimeter full fill insulation it's the next item right in the middle and um, now as I said before I could you it was a different product I could actually copy the dimension from the distance I measured when I measured the center line of my solid block wall or my concrete foundation, which would essentially be the center line of full fill insulation as well. But um, in this case, for some reason with this product, I can't do it. So I'm gonna click linear and we'll keep the color that's defaulted there. And classification is all the same. The only thing that's really gonna change is my measurement. Meter squared, drop down height is also the height of a block. You can remember from the section two and five start takeoff um, and now i'm into the center which i've done before so it's just kind of reiterating or doing what you did before as i said there should be a way of doing this quicker that i can copy the dimension of what i measured before but for the moment there's not so I hover over what's below the line here it kind of can bring me to what's below again you should be getting used to what how you navigate the drawing Zooming in, zooming out, kind of pushing up, um, zooming out, maybe kind of pushing down on your mouse wheel. It'll kind of give you that little hand. You can see it as I push down my mouse wheel. So don't worry if you're not getting it or you're not as fast as me at the moment. You will develop that proficiency. If you're making mistakes, you can always backspace a couple of spaces as you're doing your measurement and kind of click again on maybe the mistake you made. You can see that that line is slightly off which is all right, it's there, thereabouts. And then I gotta click right back on my item. So click. So there I have essentially a 7.68 as opposed to the outer leaf, which was, what was it, 7.87, um, which would make sense because I've gone inside again. If I wanted to see the distance, I would click on the three dots, click detail takeoff, hover over the takeoff there, and I can see it's 35.71. I can't remember exactly what the uh, center line was the last time I measured it. It was there, thereabouts 35, so I'm, I'm pretty much um, on track. Um, and then my last item, I suppose, from, a, from, I'm gonna click the little dot here, little eye, turn it off. My last item is the inner leaf thermal block. So let's go ahead and measure that. Uh, rising wall. Length. Um, let's give the color what defaults. Oh, I forgot to put in 100 millimeter uh, thermal block. And let's say in a leaf. Okay, because these will be individual items in a bill of quantities. If I was measuring a cost plan, maybe I could create a description that encompasses as a composite item all these items together, together and measure it through the center line. But in this case, um, I can't. It's a BOQ I'm measuring for. Um, well, let's assume that it's a BOQ. So scroll down. And then scroll down. Once I've got the substructure meter squared, default height. Again, for the thermal block, it's the same. It's a block on edge, two and five. And then we start takeoff. Now, again, um, if I've done that, I'm ready to start takeoff, but um, I've got other stuff highlighted. Um, I'll need to unhighlight it and then click on what I want to click on. Make sure then that I've got my crosshair, in this case it's not, so I might have to go back, click it again, 
and then my crosshair comes up. So I might have to just kind of click back and forth just to make sure that my crosshair comes up as a measurement or I click this little linear down here, go from selection to linear and my crosshair will come up. So my internal leaf, um, in this case, click, and then you should be getting a bit better at this stuff. Um, as you do a few, now it might take actually quite some time, but that's okay. So don't worry too much whether you're getting really slow or you're being really slow um, or that you're not quite getting it um, or you're getting parts of it and not getting other parts of it or you're not quite as quick as I said, as I am. I mean, I've been doing this years in terms of on-screen measurement. Um, no one taught me how to do it. I kind of learned from uh, YouTube videos and the internet and such. So don't worry uh, too much. You will get it through these videos and videos are actually the best way to learn rather than even having it in the lab. Um, so click back on the first item. So now I've got um, all my items. In fact, I could click um, my three items that I just measured there and you'll notice that um, there's my three colors. Starting with the internal one, which is 750 meters squared. Sorry, not 750, 7.5. And the next one, uh, which is the full fill insulation, 7.68 and then 7.87 the outside leaf um, all the items together in my substructure highlighted um, including my ground floor and um, once I click that little eye up there so that's I suppose the tutorial or my third tutorial for you guys um, it might be something that you actually have to delete and do again item to item depending on how proficient you're becoming and um, it might be something that you actually have to look at a few different times but uh, other than that, I think you've probably gone in the right direction. If you have any questions, of course, email me. But that's ultimately our third um, tutorial. Thanks very much.